Kia ora and welcome to the documentary that takes you behind the scenes of TV and radio. Over the next 10 minutes, we'll be giving you all of the insight that you need if you're looking at heading into this industry or you just simply want to know how it all works. We've been interviewing some of your favourite New Zealand celebrities and we'll be showing you these interviews throughout the documentary. One of the main questions that you guys wanted answered at home was what qualifications that our New Zealand celebrities gained before they entered this industry. Let's check out what they said. You know, I have no qualifications whatsoever. Uh, I was expelled from school in year 10. Um, I started a chef's apprenticeship straight out of school. I did three years of it before I wanted to stab the head chef in the forehead with a chicken bone. Um, so I quit that. I went into a radio station to pick up some prizes I'd won. There was this big, fat, sweaty guy sitting behind the microphone. I asked if I could watch for a little while. He talked three times in an hour and I went, man, you must earn a million bucks. And he goes, oh, it's not bad. And I thought, I want to be that fat, sweaty guy. I actually studied at the New Zealand Broadcasting School in Christchurch. So that's like a degree course, so that was like quite a long time. But through that I got auditions for What Now? And then I got it. I did film and TV at South Seas, and I majored in presenting and producing. And when I finished that, I kind of, I think in my head, thought I would go, here I am with the job and it would all start, but uh, it didn't quite work like that. And then, so no qualifications whatsoever, everything they didn't want, I was it, and I got the job. <laughs> I did, I went to the New Zealand Broadcasting School in Christchurch uh, for two years and then my internship was up here in Auckland at ZM. The media business isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Sometimes you have to get up really early in the morning and you always have to be dedicated. But this can lead to having one of the best days of your life. At last My love has come along Let's check out what some of our New Zealand celebrities' top highlights are throughout their careers so far. I'd have to say uh, it was the earthquake. It may not appear like a highlight, but for a news reporter to be in a disaster zone and to report on it and cover it, um, we had two earthquakes, uh, one that killed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, that is probably the biggest, uh, biggest day of my career. Highlight of my career so far. Uh, I'm going to pick meeting some of the cool people that I've got to meet. So some of the famous people, people who are actually famous. Um, people like Adam Young from Our City and people like Stephen Christian from Anne Boleyn and um, the Prime Minister who is far more chilled out than he probably should be for someone who rules the country. Uh, meeting One Direction because they were like, is like, I'm not a big fan or anything but the fact that you get to meet big artists that everybody else wants to meet and you can meet them, that was quite exciting. So meeting Tom Cruise, he, like I was never usually, like not a fan of Tom Cruise before I got to meet him but um, he invited us onto the set of The Last Samurai and invited us into his caravan, like his trailer. And we were like, oh my god, this is me and Dom and this other girl from The Edge and this other guy. And we were like, we're actually in Tom Cruise's trailer. We all have someone that we aspire to be like, so we wanted to find out who our New Zealand celebrities look up to in the business. Let's check out what they said. Kate Blanchett for me is um, my idol, you know, she works in theatre, she runs a theatre company and she's an amazing film actress and she doesn't get caught up with being a celebrity, it's about the work for her, so, and she works with her husband and like, they make work together, which I just think, ah, oh, that would be my ultimate dream. Um, one of my work workers, Hilary, Hilary Muir, mm. she's a journalist and our breakfast announcer. Um, her persona on air is that she's just super, super, super nice. And everybody says to me, you know, when they are chatting, is she really that nice? She seriously is nicer in real life as well. My favourite three presenters. Anthony Bourdain, New York chef. Brilliant, takes the mickey out of everyone, rough as guts. Two, Jeremy Clarkson, Top Gear. And uh, number one, Micro from the Discovery Channel's um, Dirty Jobs. He's the master of tone. He talks um, in the respectable tone of discovery, but is just filthy at the same time. He gets away with it's wonderful. Obviously, everything that we see and hear on TV and radio is not everything that happens. There's a lot of problems that seem to happen on set that you don't get to see. Everything from costume disasters to tech disasters to... <laughs> To make up disasters, let's go see what our New Zealand celebrities' worst thing that happened to them on set. Can someone give me a cloth? Uh, um, Studio A, Miss Hunton, a cloth. I knocked Dana out once. Um, 
that was pretty bad, I suppose. <laughs> Although that wasn't actually on TV. We did that. We were rehearsing in these giant sumo suits for Studio Two. Uh, so we were gonna on the show have a bit of a sumo wrestle in these ridiculous suits, inflatable sumo wrestle suits. Except we got a bit kind of carried away, and both of us in the rehearsal jumped at each other at the same time. So we we're both off the air jumping towards <laughs> each other. And I'm a little bit heavier than Dana, it's fair to say. Quite a lot heavier. And boom, I hit into her and she just was standing up. Bam, just straight down, head into the back of the concrete floor and was knocked out. Not that I would class as like really bad, like embarrassing, yes. Like sometimes I've just forgotten the questions on my first show. Uh, I have had um, the fire alarm go off. Uh, so in the radio, uh, obviously, you know, noise is all that you've got and so you have no kind of like, there's no fire alarm that goes off, there's just a light that flashes. And so when you're alive and you see the light flash, you're like, um, this could be a drill, which is okay, or it could be the building actually being on fire. In this case, the building was actually on fire. There was a fire in the stairwell. Obviously, presenting and acting are not the only jobs available in the media industry. So we wanted to find out what other jobs that our New Zealand celebrities took part in for their show. Let's go check out what they said. Oh my god, yes, I have to make my makeup artist a cup of tea every morning. Um, and um, there's so much, like uh, planning, there's, uh, I write scripts, which is one right here. Um, and that pretty much gets passed to all those people that I just talked about. So I need to take an idea that I've got in my head and write it down so that everyone can understand it. Um, so that takes time. There's also trying to find guests. That takes time as well, um, and you just do that through seeing them in the paper or seeing them on TV. You're like, oh, that person's cool. We're gonna get them on the show. My main job now is a producer, so I do a little bit of presenting on You Live, um, but the main bulk of my job is behind the scenes. So I produce the show, which means I organise um, guests and I basically organise our, our staff and kind of roster people on. And, look after that kind of thing. We've talked qualifications, we've talked highlights and we've talked mishaps on sets. So let's find out what the one piece of advice that our New Zealand celebrities would give you guys who are heading into this industry. Just don't give up. Like it's, it's, there aren't going to be roles for you straight away. There aren't going to be opportunities for you straight away. I mean, you guys, what you've been doing, you know? Like, get out there, try and find the people you want to talk to, need to talk to, find your contacts. I wouldn't get into this industry if you think that you're going to be a millionaire. I think if you're proactive in pursuing your dreams and actively taking steps towards your goals, then you will achieve them. I think if you sit around and wait for them to all fall into your lap, whatever it might be that you're into, then I don't think it's going to happen. You're kind of taking the easy way. Like there is so much that you can be doing to achieve your goals, whatever they are. Make telly. That simple. Go and make it. It doesn't matter if it's for YouTube, doesn't matter if it's for a status update on Facebook. Make it. Just keep making it because it, taking something from the script to the screen is a great process. It's fun and um, that's how you learn. You'll learn more by doing that than studying. Well, that's all that we have time for today. But if you guys want to see the full interview, you can go online at www.youtube slash user slash behind the scenes doc. Or if you have any questions at all, you can email us on behind the scenes doc at gmail.com. I hope that you guys have a great day and that you got as much out of the documentary as we did. See ya. And cut. That's a wrap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It. It's just, it's okay because we can use it. Um, that girl outside the studio. The team of We've got down here. Hey guys, I'm Sonny H. Yeah. <laughs>
Så det är det. Sjukt. Det är nike. 